Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Boy, do we have a lot of stuff to talk about today. The new GoPro Hero 12 is out. The DJI Action 4 is out. Insta360's Go, the X. There's so many action cameras out there, but, but the stuff to get the shots, that's that's what I'm interested in. Because there's so many different GoPro DJI accessories out there and everything on this table is what has made the list. It's what stayed in my, my kind of revolving kit. I've been doing this for years. Plenty of things have come, plenty of things have gone. And this, uh, everything on the table here, this is what has stayed for this year. And since it's so much stuff, since it's so much stuff, uh, there will be chapter markers below. Jump to the section that you want to see. I'll also list out everything here in the description below so you can just hop to something and be like, hey, I want to see about that thing. And then I want to go and I want to go buy it for myself. Always one of my favorite videos to make during the year because I don't know, like the stuff that goes with action cameras is almost more exciting than, than the action cameras themselves. The Hero 12 and the Action 4, both really fun cameras but all the, all the knickknack stuff, I like the knickknacks. Also the reason I've kind of combined everything this year, like GoPro, DJI, Insta3, like, there's so many of these accessories that work for multiple cameras, like anything that has the, the action, hang on. Oh, by the way, we don't need this mic. That microphone is just for fun. I've, I've got a microphone, a microphone right there. <sighs> The reason again that this year it's it's just like all action cameras like GoPro, DJI, but also like the Insta360 Go, like they've got the action feet, they've got the quarter 20 mount. This applies to most action cameras that, that you might have. Even my favorite action camera, the, the X3, that's got a quarter 20 on it and I use a ton of these accessories for this camera. So instead of making different videos, one video this year, let's make it easy. Okay, the, the very beginning of this video is like the basic bits, the, the things that you need just to get started. You, you bought an action camera of some kind, how do you get started? The very first thing that you need is a good SD card. Now there's plenty of SD cards out there that are just like stupidly cheap and I do not recommend going cheap when you go for your SD cards, although they really are super cheap these days. Even for like 20 bucks or so, you can pick up one of these SanDisk Extreme 256 gigabyte V30 micro SD cards. And honestly, I've, I've always gone with the SanDisk Extreme. They've never failed me. Like I've never had one go bad. You do have to be careful though, like make sure that you are buying this either through the link below or like a very reputable source like B&H or Adorama, something like that because there is a lot of fake SD cards out there on the internet. Uh, next up is batteries and battery chargers. Now I used to say like the third party batteries were just as good as like the OEM batteries, but then GoPro like switched to their Enduro batteries and these Enduro batteries are way better than the third party and they made them cheaper. Like I think they're, they're like 20 bucks a battery now. Most times you can get away with like three or four batteries total. So whether it's GoPro or, or DJI or Insta360, I would just say like get the OEM batteries. It's worth it's worth spending a few extra bucks to make sure that you have the actual run times, the actual overheating performance that, that the companies say that they will give you. The battery has a lot to do with that. But with the batteries, I would say you should get some sort of multi-charger. So for GoPro, it's the it's the dual charger. For sure, get the dual charger if you have a GoPro. That just means that you are charging up two GoPro batteries batteries with one USB-C port. Again, I usually say like, like three to four batteries is probably good and you can charge those two at a time with GoPro. Then on the DJI, they if you have the action bundle, it comes with their triple charger, which this is like the best triple charger in the game because it's so sleek and slim and you just kind of slide it anywhere in your bag. And then again, same thing, one USB-C port and you're charging up three batteries on the DJI. And if you're rocking the Insta360 X3, they have a triple charger as well. Same thing, three batteries and one USB-C port. On the X3, I rarely go through more than three batteries in a day. Like I can go a full day snowboarding and I probably won't burn through three batteries, but I would still say like have three to four batteries for any camera that you pick up. Just uh, safety's sake, it would suck to be out in the middle of an adventure and be like, I'm out of batteries. I ran out of batteries today. Knowing that batteries cost like 20, 25 bucks. If you do have a GoPro, by the way though, this thing I still use all the time. Uh, City, City Side Gig, I believe is who sent this to me. It's from Etsy. This guy 3D prints this little piece right here. And I've talked about this in previous videos. I talked about it when I was kind of playing around with 3D printing myself. But this little piece is designed so you can take the GoPro 
dual charger with batteries in it. You slide it into this thing and it's like a nice snug fit in there. And now your batteries cannot come out of the charger while you're charging them. If you if you have a dual charger, you for sure should have this. Except in like the, the basics bits, things that you need are thumb screws. Now GoPro comes with these thumb screws and I, I hate them. They are by far like the worst thumbs that actually there's one more that's like an aluminum one and it's like perfectly circular and those are even worse than these, but these are the second worst thumb screws and they come with your GoPro. See, the problem with this thumb screw is like, it's too round, like you can't get, you can't get like enough grip on this thumb screw. And if you've used action cameras a ton, you know that, that once you get that locked in, whether you're in the cold, or you're, in, you're in water, whatever it is, like it gets locked in place, like it kind of seizes up very often. So getting a thumb screw unscrewed can sometimes be like a, a significantly difficult task. And when it's too circular, like you can't get enough torque, you can't get enough grip on the thumb screw to get it out. I did switch to, to these thumb screws that have like really big wings on them. They're called high torque thumb screws. And that means that when you do get it screwed into something, like to be able to get it off, you have this huge thing, this big lever essentially to like grab and wrap and you can unlock it. So if you have like big mittens on or big like snow gloves, even if that's locked in place because of the cold, you can grab it and you can always get that undone. And honestly, the, the kind of happy medium between these thumb screws and these thumb screws is what DJI includes with their cameras and it is this little thumb screw. This little guy is like a weird happy medium where it gives you plenty of torque to grab onto, but it's almost circular enough to where when you're screwing it in, like you can kind of just like roll it through your fingers, but there's still enough torque on it to where it gets locked up, it gets seized up because of the cold, because of the water, you can still grab it and untighten it. This is my favorite thumb screw. And unfortunately, I don't think DJI sells them just separately. Like DJI sells like a mount kit where these are included, but I don't think they sell them separately. There is a third party on Amazon that sells thumb screws that look just like this. I have not tested them, but they are the same shape. So I will link those below. You can check them out. Uh, but if you buy any DJI products, this is the thumb screw that comes with it. And these are these are my favorite thumb screws. Next up in the little bits category is this piece here. Now, if you have a GoPro Hero 12, you will notice that they added a quarter 20 right there between the flip down feet, which is super useful because now I can just mount tripod plates or anything else quarter 20 straight to my GoPro. But if you have a Hero 11 or 10 or nine or eight, you, you can't do that. You just got flip down feet. You need to adapt it to a tripod, something like, like this little piece right here where I have this piece and then a tripod plate mounted to it. But now, now I don't need this if I have the Hero 12 because again, it has a quarter 20 right there in the bottom. And next on the list is something that, that if you have one of the older GoPros, the 11, the 10, the 9, the 8, this little piece right here, this is a piece that I actually reviewed on the channel a while back and it is flip down feet for your GoPro. Just mount with those four little screws right there and it has a quarter 20 in it. So GoPro with their Hero 12, like they kind of just copied the idea that some third party retailer that had already made this like two years ago, but now they're calling it something new on the Hero 12. I had this a long time ago and you can mount this easily onto the 11, the 10, the nine. If you want that quarter 20 mounting point from the Hero 12, uh, you can get it with this little piece right here. But if you really wanna like supercharge your GoPro mounting options, this little piece is incredible. And same thing here, I made a video all about this little piece. This replaces your GoPro feet. So same thing, those, those four screws right there, you're gonna mount into your GoPro and this will replace your GoPro feet. And I actually have it already mounted onto this GoPro Hero 12. So this GoPro Hero 12 here is, is ready with this new Falcam base plate. And, let me show you all the crazy things that this base plate lets you do. But coming off the bottom of your GoPro right there, you'll see it has a quarter 20 in the middle and it has the normal GoPro flip down feet. But the, the biggest thing it helps you do is it lets you mount a GoPro into DJI's magnetic mounting system that I freaking love. This, uh, this now makes your GoPro that quickly to mount and dismount and remount, it's that quickly, like no more thumb screws to deal with, which is why I love the DJ Action 4 to be able to just quickly mount and dismount. And now uh, with this base plate, you can do that with your GoPro. Same thing, uh, click up there, whole video on, on this base plate. And then it also clicks into all the other Falcam accessories. So F22 system this way, F38 this way, and it's Arca Swiss plate compatible. So if you have this on your GoPro, you can just take this straight to your, your tripod and just go, 
and lock it into place. That's a very cool piece to have. And then also for GoPro users, there it is. This little piece here is a battery USB-C pass-through door. So a lot of people charge their GoPros while they're out using them. And on the GoPro, everything is kind of under one door. So I lift this up, battery, SD card, and USB-C port is all under one door. Whereas on like the action, the battery and SD card are over here. And over here is the, is the USB-C port. So if I was trying to just charge it, I would plug it in on this side, but I could keep the door holding my battery and my SD card in place on this side. So on the GoPro, we don't have that. So we pop the regular door off. We mount this Ulanzi door like that, shadink, and boom. I not only have a battery pass-through door, but also now I have a cold shoe on the side of my GoPro. And of course, most notably, now it's open for my USB-C. I can plug my GoPro in and power it. Yeah, I think that's everything in the little bits category. Let's jump to the, the mounts category. And I think this is where, like this is the most exciting part, mounts and, and the next category, which is like grips. This is where, this is where GoPro accessories get pretty exciting. Do you think I could do the whole Squarespace read into this secondary camera? It's possible because my audio is into this microphone. Hey, if you guys don't know about Squarespace, they're sponsoring today's video, and I have used them for my Squarespace website for the past, whoop, whoop, a little lower. For the past 10 years, for the past 10 years, my photography website is, is purely Squarespace. I've loved them because it was super easy to set up. Like I'm a photographer, I'm not a web designer. I don't know how to do web designing, but if you go on my website, you'd be like, hey, that's a pretty fancy website. You did that yourself? And I would tell you that I use one of Squarespace's professionally designed templates. I went in there and I customized like a few things. Like at first, I just kind of swapped out some images. I swapped out some text, put all my info in there, put my contact info in there, and boom, like I had a super dope website site. But then later I like took the time, like really customize it, which is now even easier because now they have something called the fluid engine system. Like it used to be easy to design a website on Squarespace. And now it's like ridiculously easy to design a website through Squarespace. The best part though, is that there is a totally free trial. Go to the first link in the description, go over to Squarespace and just get started. Again, like I said, totally free, like no risk at all. Dive in there and start building your website out. Get one of their free templates, find one that you're like, Hey, that's, that's cool. I wish my website looked like that. Totally free. When you are ready to go live though, use code David Manning for 10% off at checkout. And thank you again, Squarespace for, for sponsoring today's video. Okay. Now, uh, now back to the GoPro accessories video. And the first one up is my favorite GoPro accessory because GoPro has never given us a way to magnetically mount our camera. And these guys snap mounts, they, uh, they thought of a way. This right here is the snap mounts adapter. You pop this onto your GoPro. This just lives on your GoPro and you now have a magnetic back to your GoPro. So you could just stand this up and you like magnet this in place on, on your car or you could have it like this and magnet onto your refrigerator, onto a car, any metal surface. And now boom, you have a GoPro mount. But the idea is that you have these adapters from snap mounts. This is their locking adapter. You put these on all the different mounts that you're gonna be using. So your pole mount, your bike, whatever mounts you have, you'll have one of these adapters on all of those. And then since your GoPro has got that piece on it, you can slap your GoPro onto any mount that you have an adapter set up for. So slap it on there, twist it in place, and this is locked in like magnetically, but also because of those hooks, like it is fully locked in place mechanically as well. And to get it off, you twist it, pop it off. And for me, a total game changer has also been the F22 system of mounts. I first learned about Falcam's like quick release systems with my big cameras and their F38 system. Then through that, I learned about this like smaller little mount system that's quick release called their F22 system. And this mount right here is their Falcam suction mount. Now I use a suction mount in my van at all times. I always have this mounted up into my windshield so that I can shoot into the car, so that I can shoot out of the car, get those cool time lapses. And a suction mount into your windshield is like the easiest way to do it. And the reason that, that I like this F22 system is again, because it's quick release, I can mount things in really quickly on and off. This right here is their magic arm. And their magic arm is, is one of those where you twist just this ball head here, just this knob. And once that's out, I can move all three, like, like this ball joint, this ball joint, and this ball joint, they all move freely. So I can put my camera in like exactly the position I want. Once it's in the position I want, I crank just that one knob and all three ball joints lock up. So this right here is suction cup mount, the magic arm from F22. And this piece right here actually is a GoPro adapter or, or action camera adapter to the F22. So that's how I, I quickly kind of put my camera up in there. If it's not the DJI, put my camera up 
put it back out. And if it is the DJI, I just keep the magnetic mount on it. And I use the uh, use the magnetic system. Another one that I use all the time is this clamp mount with the, the smaller one. You can use this with the magic arm. So I just kind of, same thing, quick release that piece off. I can swap in this magic arm, but this is kind of the smaller piece, more portable to throw in my bag. Lock that in there. This clamp mount is like stupidly strong and I can just lock it super hard onto something. Get that thing locked in place, unscrew the same thing one. I can position my camera anywhere I want. I lock that in place and it is, uh, yeah, just like one of those like super valuable mounts to have in your bag. I would say these two mounts are like, for someone that's really filming with their cameras a lot, like these two are probably my most valuable and most used mounts. Now the next one that I have, it doesn't seem like it's an action camera mount, but but it is the, uh, the Peak Design Capture Clip. Now I use this in conjunction with this little setup. So this setup here, let's get a GoPro on there. Boom, so there is the GoPro to the, the GoPro 2 tripod adapter. And you, you do need this because you need to make it go 90 degrees by mounting my GoPro straight to the tripod plate. This wouldn't work, but it's the GoPro mounted to that, that adapter and then mounted to a tripod plate that works with both F38. So I can put it on my F38 tripods or Peak Design, which means that I can make it work in my, uh, in my Peak Design system here. So the Peak Design capture clip is on my, my backpack. Now I have that horizontal leveling in there. So even if the camera is like off a little bit, like it's not perfectly level, it's still gonna level the shot out if, I, if I'm using that stabilization option. And now you can just kind of walk around, like whether you're on a hike or whether you're like cruising through a new city, whatever you're doing, you can just kind of have a camera on there always recording and just kind of getting that that POV shot. This is a really good mount. DJI also makes this one that I've used it a few times, but because like I always have the Peak Design capture clip on my backpack because of my big cameras, I really haven't used this too much, but it is a good mount. It's the same kind of idea. It already has like the length built on there. So you just mount your, your GoPro or, or DJI camera straight into it. So the idea with this one is that this is something you could add to your backpack, but then you can easily take off because it's Velcro. Folds you over, folds you over. And that quickly, you can kind of add a mount to your backpack. A good option for people that do not want to rock a Peak Design capture clip, but do want that, that POV shot while you're out for a hike or uh, walking through a new city. After that on the list is my dual mount. And my dual mount is something that I don't think a lot of people need, but if you are filming two cameras, like I do a lot, I do a lot of comparison videos, I have this dual mount. And this is an aluminum dual mount. And 100%, I think you should go for the aluminum one. They make a plastic one or there's a plastic one out there. Do not do the plastic one. I've broken many of them. The aluminum one does not break. Next up after the dual mount is my, it's my favorite mount ever. I say it in every one of these accessory videos. And trust me, when I'm out traveling, when I'm when I'm using my cameras, it is my most used mount. It's the bite mount. The bite mount is so useful because it's a POV mount that you can easily and quickly grab, turn around, film yourself, film something down low, film in different places, and then just go back to this and your hands are free to do something again. Man, it's just a, such a useful mount. Like I find so many different uses for it. It also has the GoPro buckle bit on the front. So if you have those buckle mounts, this whole thing can lock into any buckle mount. So if you have helmet mount, this thing just locks into a helmet mount, boom, you can use it like that and then pull it off like that. And it's back to a bite mount. Bite mounts are the best mounts. And the other bite mount that, that I recommend a lot for people I don't use it as much because I, I don't know, I just don't find myself using this one as much. But if you're doing something like more intense, like we went to like Powell a while ago when we had to rescue that drone that I lost and I had to, I, I brought this mount, which was totally the wrong mount to bring because I was on a jet ski and I was having to hold on like this. I wanted a POV shot and I had to hold this mount in my mouth. And this mount requires you to kind of bite harder. Like you really got to bite this mount to hold it in your mouth. But this mount has like a snorkel bit. And because of that, like this mount, it like your lips do a lot more of the work to hold this in place. So if you're gonna bite mount for like a long period of time, I would say you should go for a snorkel bite mount. And if you you just wanna be able to like pop it out quickly, film a lot of different things and be able to kinda toss it back in your mouth for like mm, a couple of minutes at a time. And I think this one's the way to go. We've got options. The next one is a helmet clamp mount that you guys have seen in a ton of my videos. And it is this guy by Dango. Uh, this was in last year's video and I've still used it. It's still pretty awesome. I do find though that like when it's on here, um, you can easily hit yourself in the chest 
with this piece here. So if you're doing like motocross or something like that and you, you're wearing like full chest protector, probably not that big of a deal. But if you're just like mountain biking or skateboarding with this thing, do know that like the wrong, the wrong like too much of a head movement, like that actually hurt. <laughs> so a very good mount, but but there's a, a risk factor to, to this mount. Next up are head mounts. And head mounts like a weird one because there's just a lot of times when like, like this is a lot to wear. Like if you're walking around, let me get a camera on here. Yeah, this is just a lot to wear. Like having a having a GoPro, even the DJI action on top of your head. Like it's a, it's a lot to have on your head. Like you, you feel it. These head mounts, like the one from GoPro, it's about the same as all the cheap ones on Amazon. 10 bucks on Amazon, maybe 15 bucks, and you can find a pretty decent head mount. The GoPro one is not that much better, and I think it's like 15 or 20 bucks. I'll link a, I'll link a good one that I've tried below. They have a really good long, long form POV mount. Like again, like you're gonna film for like an hour or so is good old chest mount. The, the chest mount is awesome for motorcycles and bicycles, like mountain biking. This is like, everyone has to have a chest mount if you're gonna mountain bike. Cause that shot that's like, that's this level, like your hands are here on a mountain bike. And this shot is just like right between the handlebars. And it's just a cool shot. Like this shot with the, the other shot, if you have two cameras at once and you're bombing down like something really crazy, like those are, those are probably the two best angles. Now this one is from DJI. This is the DJI version. Kind of a little bit more padded than my old GoPro one. GoPro also makes a padded version. And then this one is same top makes this one. And it is really shockingly good for the price. Same top makes like budget GoPro DJI action accessories. And this, this chest strap is like shockingly good for the price. I will link this chest strap. I've used it a couple times. It's just as sturdy as any of the other chest straps and much cheaper. Another really cool POV position to have a camera is this thing, which I've only used a couple of times, but it's a pretty cool little device. Hang on, let me rem oh, I press the button in the back. Check out, check out how clever. <laughs> it's a neck mount, it's called, and you, uh, look at that right there. Look at that shot. Like anything that you're gonna do with your hands, maybe you're like, you're a chef and you're gonna cook something or you're you're trying to show something that you're doing with your hands. Instead of again, having a mouth mount, instead of having a head mount, instead of having a chest mount even, this mount right here is at like a really oddly good position where it looks like what you're looking at. And your hands and your mouth are both free. So you can do what you're trying to show, but you can also talk through it. Whereas like with the bite mount, you, you can't talk very well. This one is from DJI. There's also one from Ulanzi that I like. It almost looks like they were made in the same factory. I'm just saying. The uh, the neck mount, that's a, it's a new one in my kit this year and I'm, I'm keeping it because it's, yeah, it's nifty. Okay, for, for mounts, I think that's it. Now we're on to like the grips and the tripods that I've been using. This one, man, this one here, like I, I wanna find a new one. I feel like just because I've recommended this one for so long, but this one is still, it's still the best. This little tripod from Ulanzi, the MT16, it is, it's just such a good like small, but, but then can extend a little bit tripod that is a grip, like a really good grip to just kind of walk around like that and be able to film yourself with. You can extend it out a little bit, walk around with like more of an extended shot, but then you can collapse it in. It's got feet on it, so it becomes a tripod. In tripod mode, you can extend it as well. And the biggest deal is that it has a ball mount on it. So if you put this on unstable ground, you can still level your GoPro or your, your DJI action, whatever action camera you're using, you can still level that shot because it has a ball head on it. It also has like a little cold shoe if you wanna put a microphone there or a light or something like that. Of the small tripods out there, especially for the price, the Ulanzi MT-16 is still, yeah, it's still the best there is. But in at number two is GoPro's own three-way mount. If you have a GoPro and you're using like that buckle mount system, like this top buckle mount is useful. And it, it kind of does this, this kind of three-way, ooh, that's very tight. This kind of three-way mount so I can kind of hold it out like this. Um, it's a good tripod. I'm not, I would still say go buy, go buy this one. But for, for people that are like really into like GoPro and GoPro accessories specifically, uh, this is a good one to use. And also in the GoPro world, there is the GoPro Volta, which is, is essentially a three-way mount that doesn't extend, but does have a battery grip in it. So this whole thing is a tripod itself. And then this whole bit here is battery and a Bluetooth remote. So you can mount your GoPro on here, mount this to it, 
you, uh, you again, like you don't have any sort of extension to it, but you now can power your GoPro for an extended period of time without having to swap batteries because uh, you got a battery grip. It's been good. I, I've used this a lot for like, like Disneyland and things like that when we're gonna film all day long. Yeah, I don't know, like for the price, ugh. I might just buy extra batteries instead of having to pay for this thing. As far as like poles go or like sticks go, I usually use either the invisible selfie stick from Insta360 or the DJI Action Extendable Stick, whatever this one's called. And the reason that like one, this is so small and I can mount something like my X3 on this there, and then boom, it gets quite, quite long for a, uh, a little stick that can get this small in my bag. And more recently, I've switched to, to this guy because this guy, hang on, I've got it mounted. Here we go. One, I always keep the Insta360 tripod on the bottom, like no matter what pole I'm using, I almost always have this tripod on the bottom because one, it uh, becomes a tripod and then the feet extend even more. And look how big of a tripod this thing becomes on the base of your pole. So putting your camera down on the ground. So I have this, like this is pretty much what I walk around with. I'm holding this pole or I'm holding it from the tripod. I can crank it like that. I can, I can use it like this. But then also anytime I wanna put my camera down for a shot, I just pop that off and I can go all the way down to this short here, but then look how tall. Look how tall it gets. Then again, the whole thing, oh, there's water in there. I think we were in the pool recently. But then the whole thing, it folds down this small. When I put it in my bag, I unscrew that bit there. I pop my camera off magnetically. And this is all that I have in my bag, my camera and, and these two little pieces. Probably 90% of the time, this is the pole that I'm using, that I'm walking around with, that we are traveling with, that's going in my backpack pretty much anywhere I go. Other options that I use sometimes are this invisible selfie stick from Insta360 that's like, I can't remember how long, it's like 10 feet long or something crazy. For times that I need it, I, I bring this with me, otherwise I just leave it at home. The Manfrotto Pixie, this is a good like small tripod to have, squeeze the button, has a ball head on top, you can fix your shot, but then it can just be kind of a small grip, but no extension. And that is like the tripod slash grips section. The next section is microphones. The first one up obviously is the media mod from GoPro. You need this media mod if you're gonna put any other microphone into your GoPro. So just take your GoPro, oh, by the way, this, these feet, if I didn't say it before, the Falcam feet, if you put these on there, it will now not go into the media mod because of how this little bottom piece is designed. But if you wanna put a microphone on to your GoPro or you just want like slightly better audio than what's built into your, your GoPro, slide it into here and you now have the media mods microphone. So you can do front, rear or front to one channel, rear to the other channel. And just adding the media mod gives you slightly better audio. Now, if you're gonna get, uh-oh, where's it go? This right here is the Rode Video Micro 2. This little microphone here, you can mount on the top or the side. I always say the side because when it's on the top, it's too close to the lens and you usually see the microphone in the lens, but when you mount it on the side over here, it gets it far enough away from the lens where sometimes you can even get the wind muff on there and it's far enough away from, like that, see how, uh, depending on which digital lens you're using in the GoPro will determine whether you can have this little wind muff on there or not and not see it in the shot. But then what will give you the best audio possible is this guy. Now this is the Rode Wireless Pro system. I love this. These are my new favorite microphones to use wirelessly. This is the receiver. This is the transmitter. You can just take the transmitter, clip it onto you, record something, sync it up with your GoPro footage and post. That can be kind of a nightmare though. So you can take this receiver, clip this into the top. You run a cable from here into the media mod. So now this wireless microphone is wirelessly beaming audio into your GoPro. So now you can walk around with your GoPro like this and this microphone is the microphone for your camera. So if your camera's mounted somewhere and you walk away from it, you're still getting great audio because the audio is coming from the Rode Wireless Pro and not not from the microphones on board on your GoPro. And while this is the Wireless Pro system, they have the Wireless 2 system and they have the Wireless Me, which I think is more more probably the speed for GoPro users, but I will link all those options below. Now, if you're on the DJI system, it's a little bit different story. Because even though the Wireless Pro are my favorite mics right now, the DJI Wireless system, it works with the Action 4 significantly better because it plugs 
directly into the cam. No media mod needed, nothing like that. You take the, the little receiver bit, you put the USB-C port piece on it, plug it straight into the side of your action cam. I made a whole video recently talking about the audio between different GoPros, and now I can take the DJI wireless mics, I can clip it on, I can magnet it on. However, I wanna put this microphone on me, I now have a wire, I now have a wireless mic on my shirt that is giving me like amazing audio into your action camera. And then lastly, on the table, uh, some like extras, like some fun stuff that I've used and I just think is is super cool. Oh, first up is the the Max Lens Mod from GoPro. It's an accessory. I feel like it's it's one that if you get the GoPro Hero 12, the Max Lens Mod 2.0 is like an easy sell. If you have the 11, I think the 1.0 version is a less easy sell, but the 2.0, if you have the GoPro Hero 12, I do think you should get the 2.0 lens. It, it really does add a lot of benefit to the GoPro Hero 12. And then also on this table is the Octo Mask. Uh, this is a fun mask to use to be able to have your GoPro or DJI or Insta360 mounted on top of it like this. I will say it's not the most comfortable dive mask to use. I have a funny story about it that I will put in another video, but it, it does the job. Like, like if you need a POV shot while you're scuba diving, you're checking things out underwater, um, this, is, this is a very good mask. You do have to burn the crap out of it to make it not fog. Is that, did I say everything that's on this table? I think I did, I think I said, I think, I think we talked about everything everything that is on this table. This is everything that I use. Like I don't have, I don't have any other accessories that I really ever use except what's on this table. Obviously I don't bring all of this with me for every trip. It's just specific to, to what I'm, I'm gonna go do. But yeah, everything on this table is, is what I use to get the shots that I get with my Action, with my GoPro, with my Insta360, with my X3. To get the shots I get, I, uh, I use all this stuff. Whew. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, I hope that I hope that something on this table was not in your kit and you can add it to your kit and go, oh my gosh, I never knew that, that the F22 system was so amazing. Or maybe you put these cool little flip down feet on your older GoPro or you get the new, here's the new one. You get this one from Falcam. I love that my GoPro can now mount. Hang on. This is a problem with this microphone. It can now mount my GoPro into my DJI magnetic mounting system. So many cool and fun things on this table. If there's something that was not on this list and you use it all the time and you think maybe I would want to know about it, put it in the comments below. I also wanna hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. This is my complete list for the year on, uh, on GoPro and DJI and Insta360 action camera accessories. I hope this helps you and I will see you soon. I don't I don't have any sort of ending. I'm just going to walk off this way. Are you tracking me? Are you tracking me? Make sure it's tra My A7S3 has been super weird lately. And my tracking is like all, it keeps eye focusing on something back here. Like, like it thinks, it thinks one of these labels is an eyeball and it doesn't focus on me. And then in the middle of the video, all of a sudden back focus, A7S3, what the heck?